A classic mistake in Dragon's Den is for entrepreneurs to overvalue their company, reject an offer of investment and walk away with nothing. Will Gary and Lindsay Shuttleworth from Derbyshire even get that far? They're looking for an investment of £150,000. My name's Gary Shuttleworth. This is my wife, Lindsay. We're here today representing the K92 Co, who manufacture and supply a revolutionary new poop scooper called the K92. The K92 is a poop scooper that utilizes a revolutionary rubber picking device. <laughs> and if you see those fingers actually mimic the gripping of the fingers of your hand. And what this enables me to do is I can pick up and put down objects without bending down. Now, if I protect the K92 with a plastic bag, I can actually still continue to pick. The bag turns itself inside inside the device, the handles come round, to enable me to seal the bag with a knot. The bag comes out clean. The device remains clean. So in summary, it reduces the need to bend and can be used at home, in the garden or on a walk. If used on a walk, all you have to do is clip it to the strap and the cap. The bags can be stored inside the device until a suitable bin becomes available. Thank you very much. Gary and Lindsay are offering a 10% share in their pooper scooper in return for an investment of £150,000. But dog owner Doug Richard is not impressed. Gary, Lindsay, you have set a new record. The single most over-engineered solution to a problem I've ever seen. Now, perhaps it's my failure, but I mean, I have a dog. I take it for walks. I will never wear that Ghostbusters device to pick up poop for my dog. And bending over, it's not the end of the world. I'm sorry, guys. It's a dog of an idea. I'm out. It's a disastrous start for Gary and Lindsay. Doug Richard is convinced that their high-tech pooper scooper will never catch on and has already declared himself out. Gary and Lindsay will have to fight to keep the rest of the dragons interested. Gary, talk me through the, some prices. The cost price is £22.77. Retail price? Uh, we're pitching at £29.99 for what we call a garden version and £35.99, which is the portable version. Unfortunately, the cost to actually manufacture in the UK prohibits the profit margins that we need to realise. Guys, I've got a little dog and I bought a little thing little plastic thing with a bag, it's a contraption, so you put the bag over the thing and you go and you do the same thing, throw it away, and I think it costs a fiver. That's right. Our competition is either a very cheap device or free bags. What price can you produce it elsewhere? Uh, we've had indicative prices from Taiwan at £15 box delivered. From my point of view, 15 quid would have to be the actual retail price, never mind the cost price, giving the retailer his margin, giving you your margin, and because of that, I just can't see an investable opportunity, so I'm out. The high price of Gary and Lindsay's product has cost them the interest of Theopophetus. Other dragons have also been put off. Guys, it's a very expensive product and I, I just can't see it being viable compared to the five pound alternative, so I'm out. You've just so overcomplicated a problem by having this device with all the spikes on it. There's easier ways of doing it and simpler ways of doing it, cheaper ways of doing it. And um, really, it's just not a business for me, so I'm out. 
With four dragons refusing to put any of the £150,000 into Gary and Lindsay's pooper scooper, their situation is grim. Now all their hopes hang on the decision of Peter Jones. I absolutely think the product is brilliant. Thank you. My dog poos all over our damn garden. It drives me mad, so much so that I wait for a friend of mine to come round because he's got a dog at his house and he goes out with a plastic bag and picks up all the, the poo. I can't go near it. I just cannot go near it. This, what a device. I think that it's easy to laugh and smile at an invention like this, but I think this is a really good alternative to bending down and picking up yourself. Peter Jones has amazed the rest of the dragons by showing huge enthusiasm for Gary and Lindsay's product. Can they persuade him to invest the £150,000 they need? What is the best-selling product of this type of invention in the marketplace? Because that would be critical to me to be able to evaluate whether this is an investment or not. Can I ask Lindsay to give you some marketing but, background on, on statistics of the in, dog fouling? In the UK, um, there are 6.7 million dogs uh, spread amongst 5.1 million house owners. 4.3 million people don't pick up after their dog. I'm sorry to, to, to cut you there, Lindsay, but I can't find a way of investing in you without knowing how many of the £5 product that's out there in the market have sold in this country. Um, pedigree produce it. I, I actually don't know the sales that um, that item actually... For me to be in, I've got to have that stat. And if I can't have that stat, I can't invest. So, unfortunately, I don't think you can give it to me. So I'm going to cut it short and say, look, great, fantastic. We want more of these things because I think these things... These are innovations, mm -hmm. I love it, but I'm out. I'm not going to invest if you can't give me the number. Gary and Lindsay have blown it. With the interest from Peter Jones they were in with a chance, but without the essential knowledge of the market, he wasn't prepared to invest. Well, Gary, Lindsay, Peter liked it. He'll obviously buy one at least. I should yeah, be. Yeah. <laughs> it would solve his problem. But I mean, so you must have been glad when at least when he came in yes. and, and sort of turned it round a bit for you, didn't he? He did try to turn the, the tide round for me, but uh, like I say, it was a shame that the other dragons uh, came out so quickly because I didn't have time to explain fully how much of a global market this actually could be. It is a fun idea, but this has global potential. It could be big. Hello Dragons, my name is Jamie Lawler and I'm here today with my simple invention that has retail potential. I'm hoping for a £40,000 investment in return for a 20% share. As a father of three young children, I found my fair share of unflushed toilets. Children see flushing the toilet as a chore and we all know it's hard to get children to do something when it's a chore. So I thought, how could I turn that chore into a pleasure? And that was the start of Kids Flush. A simple unit that sticks over the top of your existing toilet button, held in place with suction cups. The large, colourful button is easy for children to press, giving that visual reminder. And of course, one more thing, we made it fun. Children get that built-in sound module cheer when played. So, I am pre-trading but design is done, testing is done, and tooling has started. So I will pass out some samples and I welcome any questions. Hoping to flush a few quid out of the dragons is Dublin-based Jamie Lawler. Does mine fanfare? They all do, the first one all fanfares, yeah. He's asking for £40,000 in return for a 20% stake in his kid-friendly loo flushing gadget. Sorry. <laughs> so you can turn them off by turning the button. I probably should have left them turned off. Stop now. Jamie, I guess the first, the first question is, um, is it just for children? Because I know quite a few adults who, um, who like to hail the, uh, the announcement of... Anyway, let's oh, wow. not go there. <laughs> 
Yes. Well, um, so pre-trading, that means that you've done, you've, you've made it, um, you haven't sold any at all. Nope. Have you talked to any retailers, anybody who's actually liked to sell it? I've provisionally spoken to retailers and the, the feedback that I got was, hey, that's fantastic, when can we have stock and can you leave samples with me? So which retailers have you spoken to? It was somebody actually who used to work for, for Tesco. And how much were they sell for? £12, a retail for £12. And how much did they cost you to make? £3. Fully boxed? Fully boxed. I think my ideal would be to get into retail and possibly position it as an impulse buy so it would be hanging in a supermarket next to the pull-up nappies and it's, it's a kind of case of when they're doing the shopping, they'll pick it up. Jamie, in essence, you've invented a, a button that goes on top of a button. Yeah, a button for a button. A button for a button. Yeah. I'm going to tell you straight away, I, th I think it's crazy. There's two things you should know about kids when you know. Firstly, getting them going to the loo is one thing, but once you've got to that age, and they do, when they get off that toilet seat, they tend to just rush out. They're not going to rush out and think, oh, I've got to go back and press that, because it's... They'll do it once or twice and then get bored. Yes, it has worked in our house. We've had it on our toilet and it's worked. <laughs> our children flush the toilet now. I think you just need to tell your kids to flush the toilet. <laughs> you've got a product. Jamie, it's bordering on the ridiculous. I disagree with him. I think, I think you've got something here. And I, I remember when my children were much younger and I was always going behind them to flush the loo. Yeah. But this makes it fun. And I think most children would say to their mummies, I want to go to the loo because I want to flush it. Exactly, yeah. Correct? I mean, that's the idea. Do you have any other ideas for any other products? We do, yeah. We do have some thought around um, getting children to wash their hands. I suppose the idea is to kind of bring fun to everyday tasks for children. I hate to ask what you're going to do for that. Well, we might make the water glow or the soap glow. Jamie, I am honestly, I'm beyond <laughs> worried. Find somewhere else that you could make your money because this, this isn't it. This is not going to, to change your life. I admire the fact you're coming up with ideas, but this is not a good one. So, unfortunately, I'm out. Do you know, I think it looks fun, and I definitely think you'll sell some. And I do think you'll make money out of it. And certainly, you know, when people see it, they'll just... It makes people smile, you know. But it's not an investment, so um, I'm afraid I'm about to say those two words, Jamie. But thank you for bringing it in, because it's made me smile. Okay. And my husband might get one for Christmas. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> anyway, Jamie, I won't be investing. I'm out. With Deborah Meaden out, just Tuka Suleiman remains. Will the Irish entrepreneur get a royal flush of five dragon rejections? Jamie, um, I like it. Oh, he likes it. <laughs> the thing is, is it a business? Um, th this is the question. At, at the moment, w what debts have the company got? Um, none really, only the personal investment that I've made there. So there's no real debt and there's no real costs in the company either, you know, in running the company. So. And, and, and there's no other costs in the company? No. Hmm. And where are you based? In Dublin. Okay. Oh. OK. Do you need a London-based office? <laughs> <laughs> Could be handy. Hmm. You've got me right on that line. Get him over the line, no. Jamie. It does have potential. I mean, there's, there's a lot so of... where would the money the, go to? There's a lot of people... The stock? Realistically, yeah, but... I'm not planning on holding a warehouse full of stock of kids' flush. I'll give you all the money for 40%.
And is there any negotiation on that? No, because it's a real startup. You're going to need a bit of help. You're going to need a few phone calls, people like Mothercare, mm -hmm. John Lewis, mm -hmm. uh, maybe even take it across the water to the States. Yeah. But would I be able to help you from London to, okay. to open doors for you and get pre-orders? Right. Get some okay. stock in. Okay. And, and let's, let's get it out there and see what happens. Um. I'll take your offer. Good. Yay. Hey. <laughs> Jamie has done it. <laughs> well then. Thank you very much. Having faced some dubious dragons for much of his pitch, the Dublin entrepreneur manages to get an offer in the can and leaves the den with a retail expert dragon on board and the £40,000 investment he was looking for. I would have said that is the most ridiculous thing that's ever come into the den. Now I can say... That's the most ridiculous thing that's ever come into the den that's got investment. I'll have to prove you wrong, Peter. I'll bet you for the 40 grand you bet that you won't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was a bit worried, all right. It wasn't going too well, but Tuka came in at the end and we got the deal done. I'm not changing the world here. It's, it's a bit of fun, but you know, there's a lot of toilets out there and a lot of children. It's not unusual for the dragons to get toilet-based products pitched to them in the den, and this year is no exception. Scottish entrepreneur Gordon McSween's is probably the most high-tech of all those proposals, and he hoped his advertising-based invention would be worth a £250,000 investment. When people come into a washroom, they'll see the mixture of entertaining content interspersed with promotions. What they probably don't realise is they're standing in front of the world's first P-controlled video game, which I'll now demonstrate for you. As soon as the person starts, it starts. <laughs> to go right, aim right. To go left, aim left. The Opafetus was able to sum up the pitch in just one letter. So your whole USP is in fact the P. You really expect anybody here to offer you 250,000 pounds for this. I am optimistic you'd expect that from an entrepreneur. Can I try it? You can. Tech expert Peter Jones couldn't resist a closer look. Excuse us. Excuse me. I'm not going to tell you what you look like. <laughs> that probably Peter. quite confirmed. At the end of the game, it presents a leaderboard that's served up over the internet, so it could be the leaderboard for a whole chain of venues. The problem is, it's a game that you play when you're having a wee. No, put it down, Gordon. In the end, it was Deborah Meaden who dashed Gordon's dreams of investment. Companies, I see why they would buy them. And they're looking for people to go away and say, you won't believe what they've got at that place. And I actually agree with you that you'll sell some. But its novelty is what gives it opportunity. I think it will drop off a cliff. So, I'm out. OK, good luck. Hello, Dragons. My name is William. I'm here from a company called Clever Bins, and I'm looking for a £65,000 investment in return for 10% equity. A clever bin is a solar-powered street litter bin designed to meet the needs of local authorities by providing them with more bins at no cost to the council. The bins feature a vandal-resistant steel frame, an anti-graffiti system, an alarm and GPS tracking to solve what we call the missing or phantom bin problem. The bins also have a luminous display which makes the bins much more noticeable and approachable. Could I please have the lights down? There you go. I'm just going to turn this so you can see it better. Can I have the lights back on, please? Thank you. The business's primary revenue stream is, of course, advertising. Now, advertisers' needs are met by providing them with affordable outdoor advertising in normally hard to reach places. For example, in the middle of a high street outside large shopping malls, essentially places of high pedestrian footfall where it's normally quite difficult to get advertising. Based on a BIM placement of 100 units in the first year, 
your 10% stake in Clever Bins will give you back £176,000 by the end of year three. Thank you very much. I welcome any questions. It's a slick presentation from 28-year-old William Sachiti, who's asking for £65,000 in return for a 10% share of his company. He wants to brighten up Britain's streets with solar-powered advertising on his clever bins. Deborah Meaden is looking amused. Hello, William. Hello. I'm Deborah. Hi, Deborah. Um, it's not often you hear words of uh, one of its unique selling points is that it's an approachable bin. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, I'll agree. Uh, but, but, but about how much do these bins cost to make? It's about £600. And how does that compare to the cost of an ordinary litter bin? A normal litter bin, it's about £300. OK, and just so I understand, are you completely start-up? Have you started trading at all? No, haven't started trading yet officially. I spoke to one of the local authorities in South London. And what did the, did the local authority then place oh, an order? Oh, they love it. Um, they haven't placed an order per se, but it's at a point where they need me to confirm that I'm able to supply the bins. Oh, so, well, why wouldn't you be able to supply the bins if you had an order from the local authority? Ah, the way it works is we're giving the bins for free and we're getting the money back from advertising. OK, so in that case, I will now talk about the advertising side of it. So, Precisely, yes. So have you got agreements and contracts from the advertisers? Yes. How many and how much are they worth? OK, I've got three so far which are worth £19,200. These are signed orders and they've paid a £500 deposit. Um, Clever Bins is avoiding being a direct advertising agency itself. What I'm doing instead is I'm leasing the advertising space to the agencies. OK, well, and what's, what's that, what does that deal look like? So you've got how much of the revenue, advertising revenue do you get? Um, I get £350 per month per bin. They charge about £900, but I get my £350. William, why are the lights flashing on that bin? It's actually broadcasting a signal at which Clever Bins would know the bin's been perhaps knocked over. Could you turn that off? Yes, of course. William appears confident that his order book will capture a dragon's interest. James Kahn wants to know more about the figures involved. Okay, it's locked. I just want to understand the financial model for a second. Of so course. You go out and let's say you're going to buy 100 bins. Yes. An average advertiser is going to advertise for 12 months? Yes. And what do you charge him for 12 months advertising? Um, this is why I said I'm bringing an agency in. So I'll explain the agency scenario first, where an agency would pay me £350 per month per bin. So essentially that's over the year, one bin that's £4,200. 100 bins, that's £420,000. So you've outlaid... £600 up front and you make 4200 Yes. So the margin on a bin is clearly quite attractive. It is. OK. Thank you. Now, you said you had some orders. Yes. Can I see them? Of course. Always be prepared. Absolutely. Always be prepared. Thank you. Say. It's an impressive performance so far from the young entrepreneur. Whilst Duncan Bannatyne assesses William's orders, Peter Jones is keen to investigate the business further. I don't understand one thing, and I'm going to part the bin as a concept. I don't understand from a business perspective that actually if you can go and get £500, £600 pounds deposit, this bin costs you five or £600. Pounds. Yes. Why can't you get that one bin on a high street? The reason why I haven't done it is this. It's, it's not just... I can get the deposits, can pay for the bins eventually, you know, have, for instance, 20 bins. Problem is, I, I, I need money for what we call that maintenance gap. For, for instance, every 15 bins, just an example, they, they, it's about £6,000 maintenance for every 15 bins William, throughout hang the on. year. Deposit paid for the bin. Bin goes on to High Street. What happens first month? We'll be doing another £350. Wow, what's that? Clear profit. Don't try and pull the wool over my eyes to suggest that there are other intrinsic costs that you can't manage. Give me some good reason why I'm wrong. OK. To make it viable, I'd need to put 15 bins on the street. I've managed to pay for the bins, but I don't have the money to pay for the maintenance. Now, another major thing stopping no, me... No, no, is... hang on, you're going back to where we okay. were. Right. You've got 15 deposits, it's paid for 15 bins. Month two... Yes. It hasn't gone wrong before you've put it on the market, has yes. it? Yes. So you don't need to maintain it until it sits on a high street. Another major hurdle I'm facing, Peter, is to get the bins on the street, paperwork is required. 
and I'll explain. It's a specific type of contract which says to the local authority, these are clever bins bins, but they are maintaining this. Sorry, they're, they're getting the bins collected, yet at the same time they are... No, you're, you're struggling now. It is nonsense. Based on quotes from three lawyers, it'll cost £12,000 worth of paperwork to be able to supply the paperwork to... £12,000 worth of paperwork now? Yes. That's rubbish. That is the biggest load of bull I've ever heard in, in the den, to be perfectly honest. It's, it's infuriated me. So I'm not going to invest in you today, and I'm out. Thank you for your time. I have to say, I, I, I completely agree with Peter. I got quite exasperated then. I think you probably suffer from being one of those people who is an extremely good salesman. Um, and I say suffer from that because, actually, I'm not looking to invest in a good salesman. I'm looking to invest in a good business. I'm out. William's credibility has taken a massive hit as he loses two dragons. Will Theo Pafitis give the young entrepreneur another chance? William. Yes. Hello. If, as an advertiser... Yes. I'm going to pay. Mm -hmm. How much per bin? Approximately £900 per month. So, 100 bins would cost me how much? For, uh, at £900 a month, £90,000. So, for 100 bins, mm -hmm. if I had them for a year, mm -hmm. cost me over a million pounds. Yes. Um... No one in their right mind. If a marketing, yeah. if a marketing director of mine came and said, Theo, have I got a deal for you? Yeah. I got a hundred bins. Yes. Right? <laughs> I'm gonna advertise, and it's only gonna yeah, cost us a million pounds. Yes. Do you know why I would I'd put him in that bin, <laughs> right? I'd shut the I'd lid down and I'd wheel him out. Very good point. Can I just answer that? Yes. Um there are some people who may say it's expensive, but I've got people who've paid me a deposit. No one is going to pay. I don't care what you've got there. Your business plan does not stack up. And for that reason, I'm out. William, let me tell you where I am. Yes. I'm trying to think of a pleasant word here. Do I think my £60,000 is safe? I think my 60000 is going to end up in the bin, and I'm not here looking for that sort of result. So, I'm out. It's a damning assessment of William's financial strategy. His only chance of a deal now lies with Duncan Bannatyne. Will his order book revive the entrepreneur's hope of investment? I asked you to show me the letters from the people who paid your deposit. Mm -hmm. in the letters for the £19,200 worth of advertising mm -hmm. that you said you had. But, but what it says here is, uh, on the notes, I understand that Clipper Bins is not ready on the street yet, so this is a pre-booking order, which is only valid if it's reconfirmed two weeks before the adverts are ready to go to print. Mm -hmm. So any of these people can pull out of this very, very easy. And you haven't had an order for three months. So obviously three months ago you were trying to get orders and if this didn't work out, you couldn't get enough orders. It's not your best interest to continue with this and continue spending money on it. So I'm not going to invest and so I'm out. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, William. Cheers. It's a disastrous end for William, who couldn't back up his initial claims and he leaves the den with nothing. Next to enter the den are Steve Capon and Mark Sheehan. So, uh, what's my name? Tony. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to show the dragons a gadget that they admit divides the crowd. It's kind of a Marmite product. You either love it or you hate it. Nice to get some DIY going in the den. I mean, to be fair, this place could do with a bit of a makeover, <laughs> couldn't it? Steve invented the product, but Mark's the mathsmeister. Well, Mark's going to do the numbers, because he's an expert, and I... I... I think I'd be glad to get <laughs> remember my name, yeah? <laughs> and there's one dragon in particular that the pair are DIYing to have on board. Stephen Bartlett. This is going to sell online, so he can bring what we need to the party. I just hope he 
wants to be in the party with our product. Hi Dragons, my name is Steve Capon and I'm the inventor of Matey Measure. I'm also a builder of 30 years and today I'm pitching for £80,000 for 10% of my company. My name is Mark Sheehan, I'm the chairman of the company. I've been a friend of Steve for 20 years. Now Dragons, have you ever had a problem measuring with a tape measure and you've got it wrong and you have to go and do it again? So you've wasted all that time. Well, Matey Measure is a solution to this problem. OK, well, this is Matey Measure. It's stainless steel and this goes over the tape measure. And it's to get the measurement on a recess. So where the tape bends up, that's where people guess and that's where most people get it wrong. So you slide, you glide, you clamp, keeping them on the free lugs. So there's the measurement every time. You can walk over to where you're going to cut, stick it on the end, and mark it. So this is Macy Measure. Don't guess it, Macy Measure it. Can we, we invite you up to look at it or, or try it if you wish? Yeah, have a quick look. A tool to make tape measures accurate around corners is the business on offer from Steve Capon and Mark Sheehan. Do you go that way, do you? You can go e either way. If you're right or left-handed, it's whatever suits you. 10% of the company is what's up for grabs. But for that, the Dragons must cough up £80,000. That was the same. All right, thank you. Uh, there are samples in the boxes, I believe, and uh, we're open for questions. Having tested their product, Peter Jones is first to question the mates behind the measure. OK, so what it seems to me is that you've invented basically a paper clip for a tape measure. It's a measuring aid to get over the bend in a tape measure. It's not a clip, no. So when did you launch the product? We launched it back in February 2020. So where did you sell it? Into what stores? Well, when we first launched it, we launched it at the, the uh, NEC and it was a construction week show. We sold 500 units and everyone loved it. Then we went to the British Invention Show, uh, where it picked up British Invention Show of the Year. Uh, is, that the is that the trophy that you won? Uh, that's one of the trophies. Uh, we put it into a, uh, one in Europe, and it won gold for the product. And the diamond is British Invention of the Year. So this is really going to be good, isn't it, that people judge a product by how innovative it is, and you win lots of awards. But does that translate into making lots of money? I believe it does, actually. So, so what's, your, what's the turnover been, then, since February 2020? We, we've actually traded only properly for a year because of COVID, because our, our um, factory closed. But we sold 17,000 in total. OK. And how much did you generate? What income? We had uh, 82,000 that was our turnover. And the gross profit? The gross profit was... Um, maybe one, one second. No, I, it's not in my mind. I'm having a senior moment, I'm afraid. So, what's the total loss to date? The, the, the total loss to date is we are... Uh, ..around £24,000, because we paid around £22,000. No, I'm not asking you why. OK. Right, so your total sales have been £82,000, then overall you've lost twenty four. Is that fair? Yeah, that's fair, yeah, I guess. Fair. Yeah, fair. OK, thank you. Peter Jones discovers the entrepreneurs have yet to make a profit on their award-winning product. Tuka Suleiman now wants to talk about something that he thinks doesn't add up. Stephen Mark, you two look like very astute business people. Well, hopefully, yes. <laughs> what do you take us for? Sorry? You've come in here with a business that's turned over 80 grand. You've added a, a zero on the end and you're valuing the business 800,000. Yes. Now, either you've got 750,000 cash in the bank, or you've got an oil well that you're going to throw in. So uh, please explain which sure. genius has come up with the valuation. Well, I'm the genius, uh, supposedly, here. Right, OK. Never come on, Mark, show us how you got to 800 grand. Can I explain then, please? Yeah, sure. It's uh, 
We, we turned over £80,000, and that was with, with no marketing at all. We spent £26,000 on patenting right. for the future. We would, we would have been in profit quite well by now, but for that. So that's where we are today. Sure. So, so let me ask you a question. If you had to revalue the business where we are today, what would you value it at? If, if you came to me today, I would probably around the, I suppose, 40,000 perhaps at this stage. 40,000 pounds? Yeah, at this stage. So, you, OK, you've come in here asking for 80,000, but 10%. So all of a sudden, you've got my backup, right? Yes. That is a really unfair comment from Tuka. Why? So, because they have got IP. And when you, you value a want, business, Deborah. you don't. When you value a business, your answer was wrong, by the way. You've got to evaluate how valuable is that IP. What is the potential within that IP? So your answer was actually wrong. So I just can't sit here and listen to that. I think Deborah's quite right. This is patent pending. I'm quite well. I'm confident, but our patent attorney is confident as well. Guys, you can have all the patent in the world, but as an investment, it's not worth more than forty grand. So I'm not going to give you 80 grand, am I? So for that reason, I'm out. Tuka Suleiman is seriously vexed about the valuation the pair have placed on their business and abruptly ends his interest. Deborah Meaden is the DIY doyenne of the den. So what does she make of the measuring device? So I think, it, I think it's lovely and I think it's helpful and I think it feels really, really nice. But you are going to struggle online. You're going to struggle online well, because of the... What, what did you want to say? Online is where it explodes and I believe if it was advertised right online because it's what... When it's shown, bang, people get it. If it's on a shelf in a store, people will pass it. And that's... So what does explodes mean? Explode means people get excited. No, and no, I mean buy buying. It. I'm not saying people getting... D the DIY world is full of people looking at videos and going, that is amazing, and then not buying it. But it's how you show the no, video. No, no, let's focus on what I'm saying. So online, your sales, what do you mean by explodes? Well, we've had three influencers. And when we get an influencer, it just, it sells out. If it was online and it was done correctly and we had someone with that experience and clout, so it your could online really sales sell to date, really well. Your online sales to date are? There are a third of the 17,000 units. Yeah, I, so listen, I think you've got a business. That is a very lovely thing and I think you will make some good money out of this. What I don't see is, is a mass market, which is what I was looking for. So I, I genuinely do wish you were, but I won't be investing. I'm out. I wasn't overly excited about the product, but I was waiting to see Deborah's reaction to it because she is firmly in this industry. And the fact for me that Deborah didn't see it as a big enough opportunity that she wanted to invest is what switched me off. So the bottom line was if it wasn't good enough for Deborah, it wasn't good enough for me today. So I'm going to say I'm out, um, but I really hope you manage to make a success of it. Thank you. If I look at your product and what you created, which is basically a clamp for a measure, a tape measure, the, it's, a, it's actually really clever. And you have sold 17,000, so you've demonstrated that people will buy it. But in terms of building a business around this one product, it's not an investment. So for that reason, I'm out. Three more dragons depart, leaving only Stephen Bartlett remaining. He's been quiet up until now, but he was in the pair's sights when they entered the den. Will he join their party as they'd hoped? When I first saw this, I... I thought it was... To be honest, I thought it was pretty unnecessary. But um, having seen this product, would I, would I buy it now? The answer's no. And three odd years to do 80K for something that you seriously believe in, is it because these are full-time inventors and part-time entrepreneurs? Probably. I'm 100% behind this product. I personally think that in the last three years, there should have been more traction in this. And because I haven't seen that traction, I'm going to say that I'm out. But I wish you the best. Thanks, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thanks a lot. Bye. Stephen Bartlett passes on the proposition and Stephen Mark 
depart with nothing. That was hard, wasn't it, actually? Yeah, it was. I'm disappointed, of course. Yeah, but I'm still positive about my product. It's not a big enough problem. Yeah, it doesn't solve a big enough issue. I'm sorry, I got the figures a bit wrong, but... Uh... That's OK, you're only human. I understand what they're saying, but we have taken it on board. I think it was there's a lot of sense spoken in there, but we move on and we, we'll, we'll go our own way and make some money.